Hi, I'm Toby Campbell, a palliative care doctor at the University of Wisconsin. I'm here to teach you how to use Best Case, Worst Case, a communication tool developed by our research group to help surgeons discuss difficult treatment decisions with patients and their families. This story starts with your patient, Mr. Lombardi. Mr. Lombardi is an 81-year-old man with fulminant C. difficile colitis. He has a history of morbid obesity, hypertension, diabetes mellitus, stage 3 chronic kidney disease, and COPD on home oxygen. Two days ago, you started him on a trial of conservative management, but his white blood cell count has continued to rise, his kidneys are failing, and he has peritonitis on exam. Now, you need to talk to his family about his options. First, you must set the stage that this surgical problem is bad news. Patients and families need to understand that this event is unlikely to end well and could potentially result in his death. Even if he does survive, it's improbable he will be just as he was before. How can you be sure Mr. Lombardi's family understands his condition is grave? It is essential to clearly announce that he is very ill. You might say something like, I have some bad news. Your dad has a life-threatening problem. It is going to change his life. I worry he's going to die, even with surgery. I want to make sure you understand the options. Next, introduce the best case, worst case framework. Let's look at the graphic aid. To begin, identify which options you will present. In Mr. Lombardi's case, you're presenting two options, total colectomy and a non-surgical option, comfort care. For each option, Draw a box and a star connected by a vertical line. The box represents the worst case outcome associated with a given treatment, and the star represents the best case outcome. Somewhere along this line lies the most likely outcome. Most likely may be close to or the same as the best case or worst case, or it could be somewhere in between. The idea is for you to combine your knowledge of the patient's overall health with your understanding of the current problem to give patients and families your best estimate of what is likely to happen. Telling a story is key. This helps patients imagine an unfamiliar experience so they can prepare and make decisions based on what is important to them. While surgeons often focus on providing precise risk calculation, these numbers don't help patients envision what it is actually like to have surgery. So, how can you explain the risks and benefits? by translating the statistics you know into stories. Instead of talking about a 20% risk of renal failure and a 35% risk of stroke, tell a story about what a patient's life might actually look like if these complications occurred. You show the probability of these events by where you position the most likely outcome on the line between best and worst. Pull out key elements from your story and write them on the graphic aid. During a busy day, this seems time-consuming, but it is critical. Patients and families will refer back to this graphic aid in order to deliberate about options after you have left. Let's get back to Mr. Lombardi. If you operate on him and everything goes really well, in your best-case scenario, what would his recovery be like? Would he be able to go home again? Tell the story. If everything goes well, he will have a big operation to remove his colon, and his stool will come out in a bag. Afterwards, he will be critically ill in the ICU for a number of days. He will need a breathing machine, and he won't be able to talk. In the best-case scenario, we would remove the breathing tube a few days after surgery, and he'd stay in the hospital for another week or so before going to a nursing home, where he'll have to work hard to regain his strength. If his luck continues, he may even be able to go home again, but he will be weaker, have a bag for his stool, and need a lot more help. Let's consider the worst-case scenario. For Mr. Lombardi, the worst case is clearly death after prolonged critical care. So in the worst case, he makes it through the surgery, but he returns to the ICU and is very sick. His post-operative course will be rocky. Maybe his kidneys won't recover and he will need dialysis. Maybe he'll be dependent on the ventilator to help him breathe he will develop complications that he can't overcome. And ultimately, he never wakes up enough to talk, 
and he dies in the ICU a few weeks after surgery. Patients often imagine the worst-case scenario as dying in the operating room. It's important to explain what the worst case actually looks like, because a prolonged death in the ICU may be much more agonizing. Let's shift our attention to the most likely scenario. To illustrate this, put a mark somewhere along the vertical line to indicate where this outcome is located in relation to the best case and the worst case, which, for Mr. Lombardi, is down here. It's important to acknowledge the patient's baseline health and note that surgery will not help his underlying diabetes, lung disease, or mobility issues. Keeping this in mind, you say to Mr. Lombardi's family, most likely he'll survive surgery, but he will be pretty sick and in the ICU. He will need a breathing tube, especially because of his COPD, but we can get him out of the ICU after a week. He will likely suffer setbacks that will keep him in the hospital for another week or so. Ultimately, I think we can get him to a nursing home, but he will be much weaker and need a lot of nursing care. Surgery will be hard on him, and he was just barely making it before this happened. I don't think he will ever be independent again, and I expect that, even with surgery, he may only live a few more months. As physicians, we know that Mr. Lombardi's comorbidities and acute illness predict a nearly 70% one-year mortality. Best Case, Worst Case helps you translate your knowledge of this important statistic. Telling stories about the range of possible outcomes allows patients and families to visualize what might happen in a way that numbers alone cannot. Now repeat these same steps, describing the best case, worst case, and most likely outcomes for option number two. For Mr. Lombardi, this is comfort care. So you could say, in the best case, your father gets medicines to control his pain. He will die from this. I can't be sure when, but not right away. If we're lucky, there's time for everyone to gather and to say goodbye. I suspect he won't be able to carry on much conversation, but he may be able to respond in his own way, maybe squeeze your hand, and so on for the worst and most likely scenarios. Next, listen to what they say about the outcomes you just described. Ask them, how are you thinking about this? To reinforce this critical point, Right at the bottom of the graphic aid, what is important to you now? If Mr. Lombardi's family simply says they want him to have surgery, that is not enough data. You might reply, okay, I'm glad you've come to a conclusion, but help me understand how you made that decision. How are you thinking about this? Access to this thought process is essential. When you know what is important to them, you can be sure that your recommendation is truly aligned with your patient's values and goals. Once you've elicited their preferences, the final step is to make a recommendation. It is not okay to simply present the options and expect your patients to choose. Your job is to match your knowledge about disease and treatment with their knowledge about what is valuable to the patient. Hopefully, after a conversation like the one I just demonstrated, Mr. Lombardi's family is able to tell you what he would think or say about the outcomes you described. Perhaps he fears being hooked up to a machine. Maybe you learn he is fiercely independent or that he never wanted to be on dialysis. Using this information, you could say, I understand that his independence is really important to him, and you already discussed his feelings about dialysis. I'm worried that even in the best case with surgery, he would still require several months in a nursing home. And, most likely, he will die before we can get him home. I think the outcome you're hoping for is not possible with surgery. And based on what I know about him, I recommend comfort care. Let's summarize. Best case, worst case has the following components. Break bad news. Identify two clear treatment options. Create a graphic aid that illustrates the range of outcomes and give it to your patient. You haven't done best case, worst case unless you complete this step. Use storytelling to describe the best, worst, and most likely outcomes 
Avoid percentages and statistics. Include the patient's other medical problems in your story and how they will be affected by surgery and postoperative care. Describe how this will impact their overall survival and quality of life. Elicit preferences. Write, what is important to you now, on the graphic aid, and allow your patient adequate time to respond. Make a recommendation. So, what next? Many people hear about best case, worst case, and say, I already do that. I challenge you to go and try it this way.